All right, so right now we have our picture of Popoki. Let's say that I want to find a picture for the website that isn't hosted on my own site or um, on our desktop or anything like that. Okay, so the first step to do is you gotta find a picture to put on the site and you gotta get the URL where the image lives. So I have a picture that I already want to use and it's a GIF of cats. Um, well, it's actually, it's a cat dancing with a duck. I really like it. So how do I get this picture on my website? So one way that I can do it is that I can, you know, right click and I can save the image as and upload it to my Mozilla Thimble template. But let's say that I'm unable to upload the file onto my hosting service or what have you. So the way that we can upload this image onto our website without hosting it on our actual website is we get the URL for it. See here is that the URL or the location of this image is right here. It's at this https colon slash slash media media dot giphy dot com etc etc. So this is the URL, meaning this is where this image is located on the internet. So if I want to put this image on my website without uploading it, the first step is to right click and you gotta copy the URL. So next I'm gonna go back to my Mozilla Thimble template, my web page, and I'm going to write the code for an image, right? So image IMG do the src equals quotation right and instead of picking one of these options I'm going to paste I'm going to paste the URL right here so to do that you can right click and do paste but if thimble stops you like this use the th shortcut that it tells you to do so I'm going to use the shortcut I'm going to close out my element and there you have it, there is my GIF. Okay, so the reason why that over on the GIF side, for it, we have like this huge long HTML is because the browser needs to know specifically where in the internet this image is. While my picture, since it is uploaded straight to my directory, right? And the directory is a place where all the files live. The default location that your browser looks for files is within your website's home and a certain folder where all of your files live. So now we have this, we have this GIF, this cute GIF from the internet, we have this image um, from my own computer that's now uploaded on our website. So real quick, let me label, let me label the pictures. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna put a little P paragraph tag and I'm like, this is my cat, the pokey. Popoki means cat in Hawaiian. Okay. Little fun fact for you guys. And then below this, P, I'm going to write watch these cats dance. Okay. And if we go and look at the preview side, make sure everything looks okay. It looks good. Okay. So let me show you guys a little bit of CSS to show you guys how to make the pictures a little bit fancier. So for this image of Hoki, you saw that we have some filters that we could use, and I applied the emboss filter over there. Um, but we can also style our images with CSS. So now I'm on the CSS side. So let's say that I want my image to be um, a little bit like let's say I want some like round edges or I want some something fancier to happen so to target my images in my CSS I'm going to write IMG as the selector then I'm going to do these little curly braces and you can see that there's a little blue outline when I did that which means that the preview side knows that I'm talking about these guys these images which is good so I'm going to hit the return, and the first thing that I'm going to try out is maybe I want a border on my image. So I'm going to write the word border. How about we have the border being like four pixels. I think I'm going to go with solid, and I think I want it to be pink. So let's see what that looks like. 
cool. So now you can see we have a border around the pictures of these cats. And that's for both images. So let's say uh, I don't want it to be a solid border. What if I want to try dashed? What does that look like? Or let's say I want it to be... Hmm, what is... Um, is it double? All right, All right. another option is double. And you can see it's a little bit harder to see, um, but there are two lines instead of one thick solid line. Like maybe if I make it a little bigger, it'll be easier to see. There you go. So now you can see two solid lines as a border around my pictures and the cats. Um, I think I'll keep it at four pixels. And I think I'm going to do solid. Right? And this is something that you guys should do too. You should really experiment and fine tune and play with your code until you see something that you like. Uh, another option that we can do for our border is we can give it a rounded quarter. So you can notice when I type the word border that I have a lot of options being suggested by Mozilla Thimble. And you guys can just look around and play things play for things. So you saw, you might have seen that I was having a hard time remembering, hey, is it border radius or bordered radius is what am I looking for? Um, and what I'm doing now is I just typed in the word border and I'm looking at my options and I found it. The object that, or the property that I want to change in my CSS is called border radius. So I'm going to click on it, it fills it in, and I'm going to type in a number and show you guys what's happening. So, and this might be a little bit harder to see, so let me make it a larger number. There you go. So a bordered radius is something that um, is basically gives our image a round edge, right? So before the it was a very strict rank tingle, and now the image has a little nice curve on the end, which looks really nice. Um, and I think I'm gonna keep it that way. Great. So this is a, these are just like a few options of styling that you can have on your image with e combining HTML and CSS, right? So let's see, we've already talked about the paragraph tag, we talked about the image, now let's say that I want to have a link on my website. The way that you make a link on your HTML web page is that you write the object called you write the element called A, right? And so you write this little A opening tag, and Thimble kindly writes the closing tag for you. And to start off, you want to write what, you, you have to write down the object that is going to be the actual link. So for example, I'm like, hey, I, my link might be, hey, click me to see this cool website. Right. So now this entire sentence is technically a link. Um, it might that might not be the the best. Th that might not be the best thing to do. So um, if I wanted to, I could make this a link. But let's make this a little bit better. I'm going to write a new paragraph tag. I'm like. And let's say I'm like I really like to go to these websites, go to these websites, you should go here for fun, right? And so maybe I want this, you should go here for fun, maybe that's the link that I, um, maybe that's what I want to create as a link on my webpage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the word A, I have my opening and closing tag, and I'm going to make sure that the text that I want to be a link is in between the opening and closing tag for our link. And so I've done that and now that I go here and if I click on the A, we'll see that the whole paragraph tag got selected. But it should be that just this is the link. So, how do I actually link it to a website? 
so what I need to do is I need to get the URL for the website that I want people to go to. And I already have one memorized. It'll be like href equals, and then I'm going to put these little quotes, right? And the URL for the website that I want to link to is https colon slash slash twitter.com. And I want everyone to go to this Twitter account called Bodega Cats, right? So now, so now we'll see that when I hover over the text that says you should go here for fun, that it looks stylistically different. It has that underlined default look of that usually indicates link on a web page, right? And we'll notice that my cursor turns into a little hand, which means, hey, if you click on me, I'm gonna take you somewhere else, which is a, what a link does. Um, and so what I'm also gonna do is I want my link to open up into a new window, right? Because sometimes when you click create a link, um, you notice that your web page completely changes and you might lose, you might not, you might leave the website that you were currently on. So what I like to do is I like to do this target equals quotation underscore blank end quotation. And what this means is when I go and I click on the link, you should go here. Rather than losing my information on this page, it's just going to open a new window. And that means it'll be easy for me just to like click back and go on the website that I was just on. So that's why I like to use a target equals blank. So let's see. Something weird happened over here. It doesn't look right. You guys notice that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh. And there it is. So if remember, guys, if something looks weird on the preview side, click this little refresh button. That's a little pro tip from me to you about using Mozilla Thimble. Okay, so what have we done? We right now have two pictures of cats on our web page, and we also have a link. So let's say that I want to center these guys. Uh, how would I do that? So like I maybe I don't like how every all of my information is all the way to the left side. I'm going to show you guys how to center your objects on your page. So there's multiple ways to do that. Um, what the way that I'm going to show you is using a little bit of CSS, and then I'll show you guys how to incorporate that CSS into your web page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this. I'm going to put it um, right. At, I'm going to write this um, class, and I'm going to call it dot center as our selector, and then a curly brace. And the reason why I'm going to put it under body is that you guys will remember when I talked about CSS hierarchy, about how things closer to the bottom overwrite everything um, so what's if you have like a general styling like something that's going to be used generally um, throughout your site you would want to put that on the top while the more specific code or selectors you have should be closer to the bottom uh, so what I'm going to do is since center is something that I'm going to use over and over again to many objects I'm going to put it at the top because it's better for my hierarchy so I made a class called center how how do I make things actually centered? Well, I'm going to just start typing some code. So it's going to do a margin auto, right? I'm going to write the words display. And I'm going to put block. And I'm also going to do this thing called text align. And I'm going to write the word center. So you guys don't have to memorize all the things that I just wrote. You don't even have to really understand everything that I just wrote. Part of learning HTML and CSS is to play around with it as you go and just memorize and then figure out what things do later. Um, that's what I recommend for you guys. So now you see here I have the center class and I'm going to first try to make this image centered. So what I'm going to do is right after IMG and before the SRC I'm going to write the word class. I'm going to write an equal sign, quotes, space that out, and then in between this, I'm going to write the word center. And you'll notice that when I did that, something happened to the page. So let's open up that preview, and you'll notice that, there you go, this image is in the center. And I could do the same thing to the other image if I want. I can like copy the class, 
and I can go to this next image and I can paste it in or I can and I can paste in that center class and we'll see that my images are now centered on our web page. It looks pretty cool. So let's say that I didn't I wanted to center the whole web page and I didn't want to keep bothering with um, putting that center class on everything. An easy thing that I can do is I can create a div. What a div does is it divides a section of your web page. Um, and I can create a whole section where I want to center everything. So what I did now is I put all of the content inside this div and I'm going to write the word class and I'm going to write the word center. And then we'll see that the center class has applied itself to the entire um, web page, meaning all the parts that are inside this div are now centered. They now have the center class applied and that's styling. So that's a really cool, easy way to use div and to get that effect that I was talking about.